What would you do if you had the power to know exactly how to get a man obsessed with you on the very first date? If you knew all of the secrets to make a man melt the first time he ever meets you, how much easier would your dating life be? Lucky for you, on today's show, we're going to be discussing five first date moves that will make him want you so much more. That way you can finally stop fumbling and stumbling on your date and get those men begging to take you out again before you can even get back home. Number one today is fixation and fascination. I want you to be presenting yourself as if you have a fixation on him and you are completely and utterly fascinated by everything he has to say. I don't want you going out and yapping a bunch and trauma dumping a bunch. I want you to plant a seed inside him that's going to sprout very particular emotions. And then he's actually going to be more interested in you because of those seeds that you planted inside him. And then what's he doing the moment you walk out of this date? He's calling you and texting you, asking you when you guys can go out on a date again. So you end up winning with this strategy. When people feel like you're actually interested, it gives them the green light to continue sharing more and more with you. You want him to be pouring and investing into you. I do not mean sit down on your first date with him and immediately start complimenting him about how good his shirt looks. Going all over and above with all the compliments just makes him feel like he doesn't need to do any more for you. The fixation and fascination I'm discussing is your life is so interesting. The way you think is so interesting. Tell me all the things about you and your thought process to help me better understand you. What does that do for him? Oh, well, I didn't, I never thought of myself as that interesting, but I mean, the way you're making me feel, I guess maybe I am that interesting. So you actually want to know an even crazier story about me and my ex. So actually... She never knew this. I actually cheated on her a few times and she never found out. Let me explain to you what my thought process was. And then you just go, oh, that's so interesting. So explain to me like what transpired in your relationship that really brought you to that point. I'm so curious. And this fascination that you give them continuously confirms in their mind, oh, I, I should be sharing more. They feel like they're getting somewhere in this relationship if they're getting those positive signals. They naturally want to align themselves with what they feel like you're looking for. So when you can go out on a date with someone and feel like you have 110% of their focus and attention, and they're truly genuinely fascinated by you and how you think and who you are, for the first time, you actually feel seen and heard as a human being. Number two, is a concept in which I call put on his glasses. One of the most powerful things you can do for someone when you are trying to get them to share more with you is when a guy tells you, I know you're asking about me and my ex in my last relationship. I just want to let you know that in my last relationship, I cheated on her like, you know, three or four times. And, you know, it was, it was pretty toxic. We went, we went back and forth a whole bunch and we fought a whole bunch and things just didn't work out. And eventually I just kind of left her. You're going to be saying, that's horrible. How could you do that to someone? And you're going to be like, oh, that's a red flag. Oh, I don't like the sound of that. Oh, that's not good. My first response is to tell you how much I don't like what you're saying. That is a mistake. Because when you put on his glasses, it's about understanding that telling someone I don't like the way you live your life actually doesn't benefit you. You, you take that time on that date to allow him to feel like, oh, I want to see your perspective. I want to see the world how you see the world. I want to understand you better. So rather than judging you for what you've done, explain to me how you chose those decisions and why you felt that was the right decision to make at that time. He starts to feel understood by you and even that much more comfortable talking to you about things that are close to his heart. Everything you're doing here is to kind of flip things on its head and make him feel like the best way to make you happy is to continue sharing and continue being open. And you'll be almost like giggling in your mind because you're like, oh my God, he doesn't realize he's telling me all of his secrets. Now, number three, I want you to talk with your body. What I specifically mean by that, a lot of people are going to tell you that when you go out on dates with guys, compliment his t-shirt or compliment his hairstyle, rid yourself of all of that BS. What's actually going to help you 
is figuring out how to talk and communicate with your body language to make someone feel like I am invested in what you have to say. I want to know more about you. And as you're speaking to me, I'm paying attention to you. Let's say, for example, me and you are on a date. We're talking about our last relationship. Let's say this is my reaction while you're talking about your last relationship. <sighs> Is that going to make you feel like I'm paying attention to what you have to say? Or is that going to make you feel like I'd rather be anywhere else but here? Notice I didn't say anything. Let's now contrast that with, let's say you're telling me the same thing about your relationship and your ex. And imagine I'm like this. <sighs> Do you see how my body language can elicit a feeling in you? Because if I take an emotion that I want you to feel and I strategically plant it inside you by knowing how I can deliver that emotion to you through the things that I do, you feel like those were your genuine emotions. Acting as if I'm super interested and invested in the, everything that you're saying is making you feel like, oh, you really care about this. You really want to hear what I have to say. Meanwhile, I haven't actually said anything. People don't remember what you say, they remember how you make them feel. That you can make someone feel something without saying a word. So when you become better at this, you go out on your dates very self-aware of your body language. They'll say things like this, I can't put my finger on it, but there's just something about you. You're just so magnetic. I just can't get enough of you. You'll hear friends say that about you. You'll hear people in general say that about you when you become really good at this. Meanwhile, you're thinking, I know exactly why you're drawn to me and it's actually very purposeful and strategic, but sh I'm not going to tell you because it ruins the magic trick if I tell you what I did. Number four, I want you to become a seductive therapist. This is the type of energy I want you embodying. Yes, you're going to be a good listener, but I want you to throw some seductiveness in the way that you listen. I don't want you coming out on the date and being like, oh, I'm just going to ask you exactly 10.3 questions. And I want you to answer each and every question in exactly three minutes or less. You're going to seduce him, not by talking more. But you're going to give off seductive energy just by simply being good at asking questions, your body language and the way you go about things. So as I'm asking you the question, I'm just like, oh, so uh, tell me about you and your ex. That was scenario number one. I want you to imagine scenario number two. So can you tell me about you and your ex? Like, what have you two been through? I would love to know as much as I possibly can about the type of person you are. Does that feel different? It's not just about asking the question in general, but it's also about strategically trying to elicit a feeling as you ask the questions. The worst thing you can do is go out on the date and make him feel like you're in a rush to get all this information. But when you're asking these questions, I want it to be slow, like you're taking your time. And then as he's answering the questions, I want you to actually give him the positive feedback like we talked about, like you're actually paying attention to what he has to say. When you're not in a rush and he starts to feel like you're relaxed and you're chill, it's gonna make him feel like, oh, I'm relaxed too. And number five, isolate his attention. This is a really cool trick to do. A lot of people won't realize what you're doing, but it helps you in the long run. Have you ever noticed uh, going out with someone or maybe even if you were like talking to someone and in the background, there's a lot going on, you know, behind you or on the dinner date, you got the waitresses, you got people yelling and screaming, you got babies crying, you got food coming in and out. And while you're speaking to them, uh, they're kind of like scanning the scene around them. They're looking here, they're, they're trying to pay attention to you, but all this different stimulus behind you is catching their eye. I want you to actually make sure you try to get the seat where there is the least going on behind you. So if you can get a seat in the restaurant where you're next to a wall, meanwhile, you're facing all the stimulus. So you can only imagine when the only stimulus is you, when you're sitting there and you're paying so much close attention to him, you look like you're really fascinated with him. Now he becomes even more locked in to just you and he's even more stimulated by you. He'll be able to get deeper into his own emotions. You need to be making him feel like 
He has 100% of your attention. He just feels like it's you and him there because then he walks away from the date with you thinking about how good it was to spend that time with you. They say to themselves, wow, she must have something that I really like for me to literally be on a date with her and feel like the world stopped. And you can actually elicit that emotion out of people by being strategic about that.